Chaz, welcome to SEO Vault. I'm joined by my host, my fellow co-host. Fellow co-host, Mike. Mark can't make it today. There was a little bit of snow on the ground. And uh, he just couldn't get in. Um, but yeah, this is uh, SEO Vault. This is where we talk about the, the latest up, uh, SEO news and updates affecting the industry. Um, Second one of the new year. That's right. We'll also answer some questions at the end from uh, the local client takeover group. Uh, so what do we got first, Mike? What's going on in SEO? Uh, some chatter of an update. Very loose chatter, as there usually is. Um, as we go through every time when we talk about these things, that there's, <laughs> there's always updates. So was there an update? Yeah, I'm pretty sure there was an update in the past week. I'm pretty sure there was an update the week before that. It's probably been updates every week since we've really started talking about Google at all. So um, as far as like real volatility, though, I didn't get to check into any of the volatility graphs or anything like that. I don't know. I, I thought I saw you possibly looking at some of those. I looked. I didn't see anything that was major. It was definitely a, a little spike that day, but um, I mean... We're just talking like what two days ago or whatever. Yes, two yeah, like two days ago. Um, it, it wasn't anything super pronounced there, like you would typically see like a a core update or something when it just goes off the chart. And there's, I mean, some of them that I looked at really didn't look outside the norm at all. I think Moz might have shown like a huge spike, but uh, I always take their their data with a grain of salt anyway. It's just me. Yeah, a little <laughs> bit it looks like, but at the end of the day, um, I mean, from the campaigns I've looked at, we have seen some shifts in the type of things getting impressions and clicks, but they're mostly uh, terms that aren't relevant or sites that were local websites were getting terms that were national, just general terms for like blog posts and things like that. Uh, but they weren't really delivering the the exact answer. What you know, if you look at what people search intent was, uh, but what it, it's definitely not buyer traffic. It's a, if anything, Google's getting better at uh, delivering content, which I personally think is a good thing. But at the end of the day, you know, you just got to look at those main KPIs: the calls, the you know, contact sales, all that. From an SEO standpoint, um, you know, click-through rate and calls, the amount of people that click through to your site and the number of people calling, those are pretty much the main two metrics that you want to look at. So whether or not we're in an update, I really don't care. Uh, I'm mostly focused on those. So Yeah, I, I mean, the stuff I was working on over the past few days, I haven't really saw anything fluctuate negatively at least or like wild you know what I mean if you if you're battling for your number two you're battling for number one or something like that you know I, I but going from like page three to page one or vice versa I haven't seen any of that um, you know either organically or locally this week um, but I only looked at a few admittedly I could probably write a blog post and get published on some of these with the number I looked at <laughs> you looked at 26 of them? I, I might, 26 might, might have been 27. 27? Don't disrespect definitive me with 26. <laughs> you can be definitive at 27. <laughs> yeah, no, any, anything over 25 is definitive for me. Ser seriously though, yeah, I, don't, I don't think there's anything major going on. No, I mean, it, it seemed yeah. pretty, I mean, if you're in a certain, it could be niche specific too. I mean, s some of those, some niches get... Uh, seem to have, you know, if they did put a filter or something in place, it could be more related to a specific niche or query rather than site-wide, you know. Um, yeah. Or internet-wide, not site-wide. Yeah, for the search engine. And if you, if you are noticing that you're losing traffic or impressions or things like that, go into Search Console and... Just look at the just the impressions metric and do a month over month or look at wherever you see that drop off starting. Um, 
look at like a date range for like a month that's in front of that drop off and then look for a date range compared to a date range that's behind that drop off and it'll actually you could sort them by you know positive or negative difference and if you sort it by the negative meaning it'll show you how many all the things that are getting less impressions um, from that month over that month you'll get a really good idea of what type of traffic you're essentially losing or what type of pages you could switch over to pages and then look at what pages have lost those impressions and a lot of the time you can see okay well that really wasn't helping that search or that's not what that search is about and you could publish new content or you know move forward from there if you really want to try and get that traffic back but most of the time you'll find it's not anything that you were really getting major sales from so I mean you should be looking at that type of stuff whether it's an update or not, yeah, if you're in SEO, true. they should be looking at it. Don't so don't wait just for updates to go in and, and use that type of stuff that Mike was telling you about. Yeah. Really analyze your SEO in general. Are you on the right track? Do you have to tweak your content a little to get better traffic? It's all, all that info is available in Search Console. Make use of it. Yeah. Uh, definitely, if you saw a loss, though, you want to be in there. But you should be in there every month like clockwork, looking at your numbers, making sure you're progressing your campaigns, in my opinion at least. Um, I agree, definitely. Especially if it's somebody's business, if it's lead gen, whatever. Yeah, yeah if different. it's a lead gen business, I check my calls, you know. Yeah. <laughs> my leads aren't yeah. dropping, but, I'm pretty But if good. it's like a client or if it's your money site or something, like you should, be, yeah. you should have an eye on that. You, sh you should really know that stuff in and out if you're in an SEO campaign. But that's my opinion. What else do we got going on? Um, the reconsideration request. I honestly haven't put any reconsideration requests in, so I have no experience with that. But they're saying response times are longer. You said for those for webmasters, right? Yeah, it looked like if you were like a manual, penalized a penalty or a security yeah. issue or something. It looks like reconsideration requests are going longer. Thankfully, none of my sites have a manual penalty right now, or and haven't had any. For a long time. Yeah, no, it's I've struggled to get sites penalized in the past couple of years. Yeah. Just trying to, to do it, especially, man, did I even, I've probably got like one manual penalty in my life. Like most of the time mm -hmm. it would be just like de-indexed or, mm -hmm. or whatever. It's super, super rare. Yeah, honestly. And Unless if, you're doing something horrible, I would imagine. <laughs> yeah, and for the most part, if I get a really penalized site, I usually just start a new site. <laughs> like, so I have no concept of, of getting a site reconsidered. I've even had clients that we just changed their domain. <laughs> I was like, we can get like a, a keyword, partial keyword in the name with your brand and it'll be better. <laughs> yeah, so. But if you got to put a reconsideration request, it might take a little longer. What can you do at Google? Yeah, it's it's Google. So fortunately, though, GMB requests seem to be moving quicker. Yeah, I've noticed we've had a couple of GMBs that we had suspended. Real businesses that had to, uh, you know, put in a reconsideration. It was like five, four or five days. Take, yeah, they're putting a lot, a lot of time and effort into GMB. I think is what's just going on there. So, uh, on top of that. The uh, speaking of reconsideration requests, the Search Console bugs. Uh, there's been some recent bugs with Search Console, that uh, magical tool that we're telling you to use every month to check your stats. <laughs> well, some of their stats haven't been working too well. <laughs> uh, but the most important thing is that also, like Chaz was saying, every month when you're looking at things, you should really be looking at like month over month. Uh, same with like keyword tracking, you shouldn't be looking at your keyword tracker every day wondering why something went up yeah. three spots or down four spots. Uh, you really want to have a big picture concept when you're really looking at your strategy and, and your gains because uh, having that tunnel vision will often cause you to over optimize in certain areas too or putting too much effort in areas when really you could have just been working on the campaign as a whole and got you know, all those rankings, all that traffic and all that stuff. So, you know, if you look at your search console and you see a massive decrease of impressions or clicks or something's wrong, it could be a bug, it could not be a bug, who knows. Uh, 
but you shouldn't be looking at that day to day where like honestly I've never had an issue with any bugs with analytics or, or webmasters when I'm actually doing a, a monthly review or yearly review or something like that yeah so it typically I think the bug now is it's just a little bit delayed reporting that's what it seemed like the one the other one was in the actually the classic dash I thought <coughs> so the one that most people are going to see is just a, a small you know a little bit longer to get the your data um, but nothing major yeah it, it didn't look anything major there but but just a reminder bugs happen <laughs> and, and they'll work on fixing them so um, Google reminding us to fix internal links with 404 errors. I really don't know why anyone needs a reminder about that personally. If, if you have 404 errors on your site and you're, you're linking to them internally on your site, um, I, I don't know why you would want that. I mean, I think it's probably if you for, if you had a really big site and you deleted a page and you forgot. Yeah, they're reminding you to check, obviously, um, and, and but, make sure that you don't. But and Screaming Frog easily will give you that information. Um, that's interesting, though, because Google was talking about how you don't have to know index a 404 page. Uh, seeing how, I wonder how negatively that... Uh, that impacts the crawlers because obviously they don't want to send crawlers to 404 pages. Yeah. So I wonder if that would uh, negatively impact the crawlers on the site. Oh no, I'm just I'm always a huge believer that you know if you 404 something or through and, and it and it had traffic. I mean, if you delete something that has traffic, redirect that URL somewhere else. If it didn't. I mean, you could four ten it possibly. If you're internal linking, though, I mean, I usually just I, I, I do like a four four redirect plugin, or even the SEO plugin we use has that. I always turn it on. Um, I've actually seen gains from doing it too. I've never, never once had an issue turning that thing on. I ain't gonna lie. I believe in through when redirecting any page that you ever had. You know what I mean? Like whether it had, because I've had pages that get a lot of traffic and I don't, I don't even think they had any links, but I still 301 those when I, you know, set it up. I mean, it definitely helps with indexing or, or the Google bot when it's switching out that URL, but even when I did like a site redesign, if they had like 20 services and then, you know, like a few like blog posts and things like that that just weren't anywhere those would go to like relevant like a blog post would go to a relevant service page or something even if I didn't see any links so I just assume Google keeps a history of that kind of stuff somewhere maybe maybe not who knows so fix your 404 errors I mean that shouldn't just even be your inner link <laughs> yeah. right if you have links to your site go into 404s like fix those too so just just say no to 404 um, what else do we got? Oh, the, the medium organic traffic. Did you look, did you get a chance to really read through this or, or get to throw it in like SEM rush or anything? I did it, no. Um, I personally just think it's interesting. Uh, SE Roundtable was talking about uh, me, the website medium losing, what did it say, 40% of their SEO visibility. They're obviously a pretty big site. Uh, but looking into whenever any type of big site loses a lot of organic traction, seeing, you know, kind of how that may have happened or, or what they lost. Uh, I honestly don't have an active subscription of SEM Rush, so I didn't get to look at a lot of the actual, you know, before and after data and stuff like that. Um, but that'd definitely be interesting to, to dig in more to. I don't know. Can you do that in Ahrefs? What's that? Uh, compare previous rankings, position changes. I think you can, but it's not really that easy to look at. I think SEM Rush charts it out better, don't they? I think they do. Yeah, yeah, because they just have like a timeline of when the they show the rankings increase. So. But yeah, that's that's always fun, at least for me to go through and 
see what happened to these big sites. Don't know if you uh, have any input on that or not, Chaz. Not really. I don't have anything there. Yeah, it's not. Uh... I don't. I don't use medium other than just like a branded profile. I have yeah. zero. I, I understand like keeping an eye on big sites. What's going on with that? But I just uh, maybe it was enough. I'm just just blame it on the algorithm update. It's always the algorithm update. Must have, they must have had a special algorithm written for it. They released the medium update. The yeah. medium update. The me yeah. medium update, just like the but, eBay update that they released previously. And <laughs> I mean, those big, big sites, and even, I think it mentioned that in there, they have tech, sometimes can have technical issues and stuff. That, mm. um, yeah. But Maybe there's a lot of internal 404 errors. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, too many of them. Uh, uh, the next updating your stuff with 2020. Now that we're in 2020, you gotta funny. go back through all your articles Reviews. and posts and update the titles and headlines with 2020, and then you'll be the the you'll get mocked by Google. Yeah. To this story. Google says not. They didn't say not to. They think it's it's funny that people consider retitling reviews and things with 2020 instead of 2019 or whatever previous year. Yeah. Which, I think it's a great idea for multiple reasons. Yeah. Um, it, it's just common sense to me. That if you have an article on your blog from 2018 and you add 2020 in place of the 2018 one you're probably going to entice some more clicks because people think it's a, like a fresh article right there's yeah. other things too right we were talking about this before we started the yeah video. even changing the publish date because google will put that publish date in the serps hmm. and if someone sees a published date from a month ago and they see one from three years ago yeah. i mean all i actually there's a ton of time where i will search for things especially in like our industry and search for like citation list or something like and, an updated like 2020 or 20 you know yeah I mean? exactly but first i'll start off just like searching for just like a base keyword and i'll start getting articles from years from like years 2016 ago. and stuff so then i search for 2020 and i know there's no way google can tell me that having 2020 in your h1 and within your content versus 2019 doesn't make you show up more for when people search with the numbers 2020 yeah. in it. I mean, if you had 2020 like, your page title, you're more <laughs> relevant for 2020 than Their algorithm is built for that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on. So that's Google just... can mock all they want, but I would think that, to be honest though, I adding dates to titles, page titles, is a pain in the butt because then you got you should be coming back every year and refreshing all of those page titles. And then if you're running any type of paid traffic to them, you typically have to go update all of those ads. All the creatives for that usually need to be updated, especially if your example is, I just was doing this on Web20, um, on Web20 Riker, on our blog, as we're updating a lot of stuff. We, we went back through and freshened up a lot of our articles from the past, um, rewrote the GMB ranking guide, and we, now we got rid of the date, but we had the date previously. We actually got rid of it and just kept updating rather than specifying the actual number. Just because it's a pain in the butt every year coming back and updating all this stuff. I, 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 I do like the published date. You have to keep that fresh. You wanna, that, for click through, right? I mean, people wanna read the fresh content and, and it is a good idea to go back periodically freshen up your content a little bit you know but I, I'm actually pulling dates out of the title and then just putting like recent update or updated yeah in, you know so that we don't have to change so much all the time but. if you want to put if you want to put a year in or something I would just use a short code plugin whenever you go and update the short code with the new year that's, a, that's, a smart, that's probably your best bet that's a smart but, way, yeah. and then just don't even mess with the URLs and Mike's fine. always automating stuff uh, yeah I hate doing work he's that's, always automating stuff and uh, it, it shows I'm thinking oh manually send the send the team to tackle this he's like use, use a 
I mean, you can just also use a find and replace plugin on WordPress and just find 2019 and replace it with 2020. Maybe. It depends on if you have like other dates and stuff yeah, like listed what would for it, events. What would and that stuff. find and replace? Them? Well, you can select which tables. Mm -hmm. So you can just say blog posts yeah. and then find and replace. I mean, with something like Web, Web 20 Ranker, you'd. <laughs> Starts changing all the prices, twenty one dollars <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah, Ugh. no, those. Uh, but yeah, the moral of the story is when you're lazy, you figure out easier way to do things. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, if you are doing, I would say update your dates. If you're doing like best reviews of 2020, 2019, change it to 2020. Let Google mock you while you watch the money come in from your affiliate sites and yeah <laughs> whatever yeah go for it yeah if you're using dates definitely keep them updated yeah if sure. you're not if you if you're lazy use a plug-in to do it or <laughs> <laughs> exactly or just use updated verse instead of the date like i did i didn't want a 50th plug-in on the site yes <laughs> yeah 49 is where we draw the limit 49 plugins <laughs> Uh, it's actually not that bad. I've got, I've had sites that were like 75 plus plugins on it. Yeah, <laughs> WordPress has gotten a little better over the years though, so you don't need as much. Alrighty, the um, more more snippet stuff in Google. Uh, did you get a chance to try and find some of these I, lists? I couldn't find what they were saying. Okay. Um, so yeah, essentially Google showing list snippets in Google. They, oh, my Google thinks I'm talking to it. No. Um, the it says for list-based content, uh, specifically, uh, they're showing like small towns near a uh, neighborhood or neighborhoods to explore near Seattle in these snapshots. Um, it would be interesting if if that were to start showing more for like service area businesses or um, I mean obviously they want more zero click through rates and stuff like that so it's 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 almost like them taking the uh, the the rich snippet and again bringing it down into the SERPs um, you know as an individual part of the SERPs I personally couldn't find any of these, so I'm still trying to figure out as if it's just the schema markup for a list, or, or exactly how it's pulling that. Sure. Interesting. <clears throat> Here's the content of the page, because they have the list on their site, but I didn't realize they had a link right here. Yeah, I'll have to check. I must. I would assume it's some type of schema. If you're not using any type of schema markup by now, I highly suggest you start. <laughs> like, just make a few templates: a local one, an FAQ one, uh, product schema or service schema. Um, I would even put like together a video organization, whatever. Whatever ones you're, you you can use currently, or you would be using on almost every page, and, and start using them. Yeah, they're definitely they're definitely pulling more and more um, the zero click stuff. Uh, the more you can add to your site, I think the better you would be. Definitely, I agree with that 100. Yeah, Google wants to just pull the data from your site and deliver it to people. Yeah. They don't want to send people to your site but people will obviously go to the site it's going to be hard for google to deliver that i mean even in our on-page optimiz optimization service at web 20 ranker we, we start putting at the operating faq schema now just because it's it, you know you can add this so easily into your pages whether it's a local site uh, an affiliate site a national site you know and that's a really nice one to add if you get some, you know, if, you, if you're if you pulling rich snippets for frequently asked questions, like, that's awesome. You know? Oh, yeah. And you take up so much room on those pages that you, when you get those. Um, that's like the space of, like, two full listings, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, I personally think that the Serps are going to be a lot of snippets for the most part. So yeah, I, I definitely see Google being all about the rich snippets. I even think local search, I could see them starting to pull more of that data like they were testing before, which is pulling a phone number and uh, address info and listing it with a website, almost more like a local search box. Mm -hmm. I, I see local taking over a lot um, with tying in websites and, and that just changing drastically this year, which we talked about on the last one with our 2020 predictions. So. Anywho, uh, what was the next thing we were talking about? Google essentially mocking voice search optimization too, calling it a fad. Don't op don't optimize for voice search. It's not important. Getting found when people are telling their phone to find something for them is not not going to be something you need to worry about. I feel like this is Google saying like, don't worry about getting backlinks. Like just don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll yeah. I, you know. I don't think that's. I don't think you listen to Google when they tell you not to think about voice search. It's growing. All the all the studies show that it's growing, um, and there are proven methods of getting visibility. Not visibility because you're not being seen. You're being heard. Mm -hmm. So what are you getting? If it's not visibility, where are you getting? Exposure. Exposure. There it is. Yeah, I mean, think like Alexa, Google Home, yeah. all that stuff. And then so you can get exposure there if you optimize, and there's ways to do it. And I, I, I would definitely continue doing voice search optimization if you're, if you're uh, optimized for any source of traffic you can. Like I wouldn't neglect any channel just because Google says it's yeah. a fad. Well, is voice search a fad? I mean, is is that what they're really saying then? Is voice search a is fad? Is the Alexa and Echo and Google Home are those all like industries struggling? Yeah, like they're, they're going. They're out? here today. They'll be gone tomorrow. They're a fad. Voice maybe. recognition on your phone. It's not a fad. It's it's more and more. I mean, that's the the wave of the future. Pretty much is. Yeah. And uh, it's traffic. It's it's exposure. You need it for your brands and your business and optimize for it. So yeah, definitely optimize for voice. And we have a whole episode, one of our previous SEO vaults, oh, yeah. an entire episode dedicated right. to voice search optimization. Lots of value and gold nuggets dropped in that. It's eight or nine or seven or yeah, just somewhere. watch them all, you'll find it. Yep. The, uh, so yeah, optimize for voice search. What else we got? Um, Google's ad source. Google outsourcing to telecom companies for support. That's pretty much was the, uh, so yeah, not really a big deal. Not anything I really care about. Yeah. Um, oh no, there, it, it wasn't a whole, whole lot going on, in my opinion, this, this past week in SEO. Maybe a little volatility, you know, and maybe if your industry experienced it, maybe it was for you. But, Overall, from what I looked at, things were again relatively calm. Um, hearing a lot of predictions on 2020, and take half that stuff you're hearing with a grain of salt. Half these people aren't out there testing. This is going to be my little rant piece right here. Half these people that are giving you info out there don't do tests. They, they don't have the ability to test. They something happened to one of their clients, and they're taking that as the the, the gospel that it's plot applicable to all listings or websites or whatever it was they're looking at. They're taking one specific isolated instance that you can't repeat most of the time when you actually test it standalone. Obviously, some of the stuff's okay, but literally, this is the way they're getting their information, and then they're presenting it as gospel. And and then when you ask them. Uh, you know, for your test results, you're like, oh, it was this one client site here. If you got 200 clients and the same thing happens to all 200, then you could probably draw some sort of conclusion. But yeah, you know, you you need either more data or, I mean, you need more data. That's it. You could one, two, three, even seeing something happen 10 times doesn't say anything. Like there might be a connection. There might not. You know what I mean?
That was the biggest thing I saw was, I mean, I read a couple of things, not in the ones you sent over. It was that one I, heart, I, I can't stand. Um, which one? This is round table. It's the journal or whatever. Oh, the search engine journal. Yeah. yeah. The one I, and I was reading something in there, and it was like, man, these people that write for these, these, these I'm calling them SEO rags. They're not even SEO emags at this point. They're SEO rags. Half the people that are writing for them are just clowns. They're straight up industry clowns. They've never ran a successful client agency. Um, they don't do testing. You know, they have one client or two clients, and something happened there, and that's their test. It, and they're just, ugh. Tell them how you really feel. I, I just did. I'm not going <laughs> to name any names, but man, 2020 might be the year I start naming some names and calling people out. Just because I'm so, I get to the point with some of these people. Well, we deal with it every day, too, because of clients saying, well, I read this, or yeah. what about that, or, you know, yeah. <laughs> they have one client, and it's a struggling campaign, and it's always this thing or that thing. And but unfortunately, I don't think that's going to change anytime. Yeah. It's, it's the industry, you know. They're getting exposure, whatever. Yeah, it's uh, oh. it's just the way it is. So. You want to do some LCT questions? Yeah, let's rock out some of these questions. How long do we, we have? Call it a day. We got about eighteen minutes. Eighteen so. minutes. We'll run through a couple questions. Um, Some of these are kind of long, so is this one? the second one's pretty good. It's not so much SEO, but it's a good one. Um, and the third one's about email. So the first one's about local companies. First one, somebody's asking how basically how can they get more visibility, and their city was Miami. Um, but they're on the outskirts or something. Yeah, right? they or, looked like they were on the outskirts. Um, how do they get more prominence? Yeah, I mean, my suggestion really on something like that is go to localclienttakeover.com and get in the GMB course there and go through that and just start implementing those strategies. And that's a, that's a solid foundation right there because it covers all the basics of prominence, all the basics of relevance, gives you actual things you can implement right away that'll help you. Um, but also understand too, like if you're, depending on where you're located at, and so we, you know, we didn't do an audit of this, but what if they're in, you know, what if they're struggling because they're in a building with 10 other listings that do the exact same thing in their possum field and they just didn't identify that, or they could have duplicate listings, or they could be service area business listings that filter and have overlapping service areas that filter each other out. Like there's a lot, a lot of reasons why something might be struggling, um, which again, at the in the LCT course, I show you how to do an audit for all those issues, how to identify those. Um, again, it's not the end of of local, but it's it's the start you need. It, it shows you how to do your audits, how to identify issues, and then how to begin building prominence and relevance. Um, but it, without being able to audit the listing. Who knows, right? At the end of the day, in local, here's what's happening. Local's, uh, Google's crawling your GMB listing and they're looking at the name of your listing and the category of the listing to define relevance, right? They're also looking at the address of your listing and that's gonna also define location relevance. So they're looking at like niche relevance, location relevance, and then they start looking at how many brand signals your listing has, your brand has, um, that's links to your website, links mentions of your brand in itself, um, reviews, uh, check-ins, photo uploads, any type of signal that's related to your brand that Google can measure can be basically considered part of prominence at this point. That's really what it is, right? So anything you do that's decently quality should have a decent impact on you somewhat, unless you're being filtered, which you need to identify. Um, so specifically, so though he's saying, does create, you know, he's saying, what well, should I create some neighborhood specific content? Yes, absolutely. Should you create uh, locally relevant signals? Yes, absolutely. Add your keyword Miami places? Yes, absolutely. It helps create co occurrence. Um, 
So yes, 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 all that stuff helps. You can do that and whatever else you want to do as long as you're creating relevance and signals. And then, you know, it's, it's not magic there. Like the ranking in the three packs, not magic. It's, it's literally, it's very similar to it was when the maps originally rolled out. It's still, at the core, it's still the, now they have added to it over the years, but at the core, it's still the basic process. Just more process. puzzle pieces, but you're still building the same puzzle. It's the same thing. You know Back I mean? in the day, it was how many citations do you have? It's not yeah. that anymore. Now it's how many brand signals and just any type of signal that Google can can it's like identify. A, it's a brand citation in general terms now. Yeah, not now just like an do you NAP. have a review? Do you have somebody checking yeah. in or uploading a photo? Those are brand signals now, just like before you could just build a bunch of citations. It's just building brand signals and creating relevance. Now they did mention too, uh, when they're looking at the search term in Local Viking for keyword Miami. So don't just look at your keywords with the geo modifier. Definitely Ooh. make sure that you're looking. Oh, well, that's an issue right there. Yeah, make sure you're looking at your keyword without a geo modifier. Yeah. So it should just I mean, be keyword. I missed that. That's that could have been the issue right there. Yeah, you can't use the geo grid with a local modifier. It throws off the results because then it's Google already geolocates them because it puts them at specific pinpoints, longitude, and latitude points latitude points it's already geolocated you don't have to add your geo term to it because it, it just skews the results yeah um so yeah that that could have been the issue itself right there yeah exactly i went in a 10 minute rant when it was probably what you had said <laughs> <laughs> so when you're using the geo grid at local viking just your top level keywords, not location modifier. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, you can show in local search for geo modifier, but when using the yeah. rank tracker, that it's like putting near me keywords in there too. Yeah. It's essentially the same yeah. concept. In it the geo grid. In the geo grid tracker, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. but that'll also give you a good idea how you're actually ranking compared to you know, putting that in the thing. <laughs> so the the next one, it's uh, not SEO related, but I think it's kind of interesting. It's uh, how do you guys like to build scarcity and create the feeling like I need to buy now? You know, um, I'm assuming that I believe they were talking specifically in regards to like clients mm -hmm. selling SEO services. Um, he gets the yeses and I'm interested, but actual swiping of the credit card takes longer than he'd like it to. Like, how do you get them, get the card now, and charge them? I don't know how long he's taken. So but... I mean, I'll talk through this a little, but it just sounds like maybe you have to, maybe it's on, if you're getting the yeses, but you're not swiping the credit card, there's a disconnect there. Like, when you get the yes, like, okay, great, here's a link that you, you can initiate right away, or... Okay, great. My team's going to send over the authorization, uh, the CC authorization form, and we're going to get this project rolling immediately. I mean, the payment is it's the yes, just, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, it's, like, it's not a yes simple. to pay, pay. Or, I mean, if you're getting yeses, then put maybe use something like Proposify or something where the payment link's right there. If you've got the yes, then it's super easy. So I, I, it just sounds like there's something, if you're getting the yeses and I'm interested, Getting them to pay, um, I, I just ask. For They're it. not saying yes then at that point. Yeah, make it, avoid any, if there's a roadblock or any type of obstacle to pay, uh, eliminate that and then ask for payment and you should really easily get your payment if you presented, the, if you showed the value of what you're going to do. Yeah, like I'd be on, if I'm doing, I'm usually on the phone if I'm getting, a, like closing an actual client and at that point I'm getting a card or a payment over the phone and mm -hmm. uh, it'll be let's get your payment let's get your information so we can get started you know immediately because that's what a yes is it's we're going to start right now yeah you know i mean if, if you i mean yeah i mean i guess it would be better if i knew what he was doing right yeah you, you always can really need to know more of the process to I mean, get is, that. It, is it an seo thing is it e-commerce because Man, it could be a bunch of different things. Well, yeah, if he's getting a yes, I'm assuming it's not just e-commerce. Yeah. He's getting people to sign up for type a type of marketing service. And so, I mean, essentially, you just need to make... Get, I'd, I'd look at your process and just yeah. refine your process and make sure that 
you know, however, so typically if you're selling a client, um, if, you, if you give them a proposal, you should be prepared to take payment at the end of the presentation of that proposal. So look at your system first to make sure you have that in place, right? Do you have a Stripe account? Do you have Square? Whatever you're using, do you have yeah. some type of invoicing billing system set up that easily connects with your proposal process? And look at your proposal process. If you present your proposal on something like Zoom and you go over it with a screen share, you know, drop the payment link right in the chat and at the end, like, hey, here's the payment link. And you could host your payment link on your web page somewhere where you could kind of take them in, they could, whatever, right? Whatever is easiest. That's what I went over in the automation at the yeah. mastermind, essentially, so yeah. where it sent them the proposal and the second they signed off on it, they took, it took them right to the page and put in their credit card number and billed them. And yeah, like build and, that yeah. system. Um, and, and that should that should fix that problem if it's a problem. That shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. That's actually a good problem to have because you're close to getting paid. No, yeah, you just have to make sure you get paid. Make sure you're asking for it too. Yeah, don't be afraid to ask. Like Especially if, you if they a, say yes, if they you gave you the proposal, go ahead and ask. <laughs> like don't wait ten weeks to, to initiate them. If you gave them a proposal, try to close them at, at the time of presenting the proposal and get painted right at the end of that meeting. Like don't don't make another meeting to, to sign them or that could also be maybe. Yeah, no, I, I push give hard. Them, give them no time, like. Like you, you give them that proposal, whether you go to them in person or you do a Zoom meeting, be prepared, whatever your system is, build that system pre before that you can immediately accept payment and initiate and onboard and begin the onboarding process. Anything you can incentivize getting the campaign started to, you know, is good if you're going to send them something or obviously if you're like running any type of Facebook ad or paid ad, that's probably easier than like an organic SEO. Um, and, and if you've included any type of like bonus or discount or yeah, yeah. something like that, or even here another thing you could you could consider is if you're doing PPC right, um, just fall back on like if you're adding like okay you're doing SEO and PPC, well like you know PPC I can get your call starting in seventy two hours so yeah. let's get this payment done now so we can get your phone ring within three days you know we'll have your phone we'll have, we guarantee we'll have your phone ring on this date so here's the payment thing. Something like that could could maybe push push that last uh, urgency message to them. That could be the urgency right there. Yeah. Something like that. If you do that, I don't know. So hopefully that helps. Um, the last one is this, essentially what's a good autoresponder. Oh. Yeah. We we got a few minutes. So, but other other than that, if you want to. Oh, the best autoresponder. All right. Jeez, man. <laughs> I don't know. I've used a bunch, and so far, I haven't been super happy with any of them that I've used. Um, I'll run through the ones I've used so far with less than impressive results. Uh, I, I tried MailChimp. I wasn't pleased with it. It seemed limiting, and it just wasn't for me. Aweber, tried that again, had issues with it, just different multiple issues with that as well. Um, tried things like... Uh, else? I mean, there was a few other, uh, shoot, um, a couple where you, I forget what was the one we just did before active campaign. Uh, they had automations as well. It was a bulk, it was a bulk or one of the monster, bulk, you know, I'd have to look, it was another one we did that uh, was, right now we're trying active campaign, I'm not pleased with them either, we've been on some. And like, um, deliverability is so it depends on what you're talking about too. So like deliverability for like AWeber and Active Campaign, that's pretty good. Yeah. Um, Even Mailchimp. Those are and Mailchimp, yeah, uh, was pretty good. Is it Mailchimp? Oh no, Get Response. I, I just don't like Get Response. I use SendGrid and they did. They actually kind of were crap. SendGrid I used to use and they were really good. Uh, but yeah, they have. I use I use used theirs instead of. You can also set yours up, your own up, and then age it. Yeah, no, I use theirs. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, they didn't get that good. Um, honestly, at the end of the day, like A Weber and uh, Active Campaign are probably just my two higher ups. If you're looking to really automate like different triggers and emails, though, um, I say Zapier. 
keep looking. Well, From all the ones we've mentioned, keep looking because we're still looking too. Well, in Zapier, you can also send emails or like hook it up to Gmail to send an email from a Gmail account, mm -hmm. and you can make delayed reactions and conditional logic and reference things in Google Sheets to determine if other things. So, but I mean, that's a little more advanced. But yeah. honestly, <laughs> that's the easiest way for me to, I to mean, make automations. If, if, if you're me. looking for automations, I mean, I'm on, I, 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 we're stuck with active campaign right now. We've had a lot of issues with automations. We've had, don't, right? I mean, yeah. there's, we've had so many issues. Like, literally, we have support tickets this long. I, I will say, active campaign would probably work fairly well if you're just like a local marketing agency and not like an e store. You need store. something more simplified. Or, yeah, where it's more just time based follow up, canceling a. They're a prospect, now they're a customer and starting yeah. this automation canceling their new customer were in the you know second month automation. Yeah. That would be a lot easier because I think that so I mean I would probably say active campaign if it's for your agency, yeah. to be honest at this point. Yeah, I mean they their support was really good. I can give them the good support. Some their of the automation just wasn't are just there, not though. good. And their integration with WooCommerce isn't good either. Any There's type of e -com, I would stay away from yeah, active campaign. If it's e-commerce e and you want to get some real intensive automations and data integration going on, I would say uh, w the next two that we're looking at right now and potentially going to test would be Clavio and ConvertKit if we leave active campaign, which we are considering due to some automation issues. Yeah. With, with the deep data, with e-commerce and stuff like that. So. Um, but yeah, yeah, I don't, eh. yeah. <laughs> good luck, <laughs> good luck. Yeah. And if you're setting up some crazy automations, good luck, because you can go down rabbit holes with those. Oh yeah, <laughs> I enjoy that All right, good episode. Alrighty, Thanks yeah. for everybody that tuned in. Um, every Thursday, 4 p.m., broadcast this out in the local client takeover group make sure you check us out at local client takeover.com web20ranker.com we have tons of new content coming out in 2020 um lots of good stuff on the plans for you but rock on guys yeah that was corny as shit was it rock on <laughs> rock off <laughs>